In this next video on ratios, we're going to practice more with equivalent ratios. So remember that we're going to be dividing, multiplying, and following the pattern to find and create equivalent ratios. We're also going to find those mysteries by looking at the patterns. All right, writing a ratio in its simplest form. Simplest form is always about dividing because we're going from bigger numbers to smaller numbers. So when we see 8 to 12 for Jamie's to Kelly's money, we're going to divide by the greatest common factor in order to find the simplest form. Remember, the simplest form is a special type of equivalent fraction. There are many equivalent fractions for any given fraction, but there's only one simplest form. The simplest form is the one that you find where you can't divide anymore. Let's look at two to three and talk about why it is the simplest form. First, it follows the same order as our original ratio, eight to 12. Second, it is the same value as our first ratio, eight to 12. And third, it can't be divided any further. Two and three are not found on the same times table, except the one. And if we just divide by one, we get the same number. So it can't be made any simpler. That's the simplest form. Remember how when we saw a mystery, we needed to multiply or divide to, to solve it, to figure out what was missing. We always multiplied or divided by the same factor on both sides of the ratio. Sometimes we can look at the ratio as one stacked on top of the other to keep track of the first term and the second term. That can make it easier to see that when the, than when the ratios are side by side. So let's practice that as we find some more equivalent ratios. In this bit, we have 18 to 15 is the same as what to five. Now, when we stack these ratios one on top of the other, we can easily see that 15, the second term of the first ratio, is greater than five, the second term of the second ratio. So dividing is a great strategy to use. 15 divided by what gives me five? Well, it's 15 divided by three. So when I divide 18 by three, I should get six. Six is that missing first term of the second ratio. And it's easy to see what's missing when we stack the ratios one on top of the other. Now let's check our work. We think six belongs in that green missing spot, but let's check with multiplication to make sure that's true. If we go from five to 15, we need to multiply by three. Five times three is 15. Now when we go from six to 18, are we also multiplying by three? Yes. 6 times 3 is 18. So by writing the ratios out horizontally and then vertically, we can better organize our work and make sure we don't make mistakes. Now, we're looking at three ratios equivalent to 16 twelfths. Notice 16 twelfths isn't in the simplest form. Sometimes finding the simplest form first can help you find other equivalent ratios. So 16 and 12, both have two as a factor, so we can divide it and make eight, six, eight to six, but that's not the simplest it can go. Look at eight and six. They also share a factor of two, so we can divide those by two again, where we will see C, four to three. Okay, can you see how four to three is the same as dividing this ratio by two? Okay, now we need to look for another equivalent ratio. So we've got to look at each option we have left over. We know A is equivalent and we know C is equivalent because those were the two ratios we saw on our way to getting to the simplest form, which is four to three. Now we can use the simplest form to help us find other ratios. For example, we can look at B. Four times what gives me 32? Now here's where you really need to know your times tables. If you're not sure, we can do four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. 32. So 4 times 8 gives me 32. Does 3 times 8 give me 24? If yes, then that's another equivalent ratio. If not, we need to move on and keep checking. Let's look at 4 to 3 and 12 to 8. 4 times what gives me 12? 4, 8, 12 times 3. 3 times 3 gives me 9. So D is not an equivalent ratio. Let's look again comparing C, 4 to 3, with E, 24 to 16. 4 times what gives me 24? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, times 6. And 3 times 6 gives me 
18. So E is not an equivalent ratio. I want you to notice that when you're finding ra uh, equivalent ratios for one ratio and it's not in simplest form, it might be helpful to go down to the simplest form first and then work your way back up through the multiplication tables in order to be able to see those relationships. It might have been harder to realize that 32 to 24 was the same as multiplying our equivalent ratio 16 to 12 by 2. That might have been harder for some folks, or that might have been easier to see that relationship. Either way works, as long as you can find a consistent multiplication or division pattern to go from one ratio to another, you have a hint that those are equivalent ratios. Now, once again, we're looking to fill in those blanks to find the equivalent ratios. Remember that when we're missing one of um, the second ratios, a lot of times we might want to use multiplication if we're moving from a smaller number to a bigger number, just as we are in problem A. 3 to 6 is the same as 6 to what? Now, nobody better say 3. Remember that order matters in a ratio. So we're looking at a multiplication pattern here. Don't get confused because the number 6 was repeated twice. 3 to get from 3 to 6, we need to multiply by 2. So in order to find the second term of the second ratio, which is a mystery, we need to multiply 6 by 2. We're always doing the same multiplication or the same division. Now remember, as you work on solving these problems, you can use the strategy of placing them one on top of the other so it's easier for you to align the first terms and the second terms to figure out what you're multiplying or dividing by on both sides. So feel free to rewrite these ratios as you do them. I want you to take a little moment with your pen and paper or pencil and paper and work out these ratios right now. Always showing your work to tell what you're dividing by or what you're multiplying by. That was the end of our practice with ratios and you're going to try with a quiz assignment today on Google Classroom. Thanks again for watching and remember, there's an infinite amount of equivalent ratios but there's only one simplest form. So find that simplest form and use multiplication and division patterns to help you expand your universe of ratios. Thanks.